Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we are continuing our reusable space program with the planetologists on the ground on the moon. It is finally time to actually launch some hardware for mining Keithane here. And so we have this uh, lander, which actually looks pretty large, but that Keithane tank is heavy. However, the whole rig is not able to get into orbit, so we're going to use a slightly different launch style in this case. Now, that upper stage is capable of over 2 kilometers per second delta V. So what, in, instead of getting up to orbital velocity with the entire rocket and completing a, an orbit before returning to base, we're actually going to burn vertically. And using the landing autopilot, I'm going to adjust my uh, velocity slightly left and right until we uh, come straight back down on top of the landing site. So there you are. You see, we're going to land... Uh, 1.3 kilometers west of KSC and that's mostly because we've gone straight up now from here with this extra uh, vertical velocity we're gonna try and go into a circular orbit now this is not the most efficient way to get into orbit by any means in fact this is terribly inefficient but it means that the launch stage the reusable stage is going to come right back down on top of uh, Kerbal Space Center and we'll be able to you know do our usual uh, landing and well in this case we might actually be able to repurpose it but before then we have to get into orbit so forget the velocity vector we are just gonna burn sideways and try to pick up as much velocity as possible and then you see the Keithane mining pr well, mining probe that's what it is well that's a that's there, that's falling back to the surface. Actually, right now it's continuing straight up. One of the requirements for this is that the payload have enough delta V to get into orbit and that it still be low enough mass that by the time we get back to the launch vehicle that it has not yet entered atmosphere because if that were to come down and you were unable to control it, of course, it would crash and be removed from the game. So we're trying to, you know, keep these things... Keep the whole thing legit. Keep it real. Anyway, we're just basically burning sideways, and now uh, you can watch the periaps rising. The apoaps will rise slowly initially, and then as we get closer to orbital velocity, you'll see the apoaps will start to to rise faster and faster. And that's you know that is that's where the inefficiency comes from. If your apoaps gets too high, that's you kind of wasting fuel because ultimately you're going to want to come back down into an orbit which is like a 105 kilometer orbit so you can encounter the station and all that extra apoaps is basically delta v that we're going to have to remove but i'm just going to stop once i get my periaps above 71 there we are we are now in a safe orbit and it's time to switch back to the launch vehicle which as you can see uh you can see in the map that the orbit is actually going to land in the ocean but that's okay because the planet is rotating underneath us and we're trusting what mech jeb says here you know it, it's you can do this without it but it makes it a whole lot better if you can actually put it down within one kilometer especially when you see what i've got planned here so yeah just gonna time accelerate and we shall descend back to the planet now this is not like the the return profiles you've seen previously Previously, we've kind of skimmed through the atmosphere for a long time and lost velocity quickly. In this case, we're basically plunging straight down. Now, of course, we're not going at, you know, three kilometers per second like we would if we were returning from inter interplanetary trajectory. No, we're just kind of going vertically straight down. And for some idiotic reason, I, I close my landing gear and then uh, I'm using my RCS system because there's tons of fuel left and I might as well. But yeah, put the landing gear back out, and once the air pressure kicks in, all our parachutes will open, and it will just be fighting. Look at those G-forces, like 15 Gs. We're going straight down and killing our vertical velocity. You can see Kerbal Space Center down there below us, rushing up to meet us at the speed of sound. But hopefully we will kill all our velocity before then, because we do not want to make a crater next to the launch center, especially with all this fuel, uh, well, all this motor propellant sitting around. No, we want to reuse this. And nice, so that's parachutes open. We're just going to continue down. You can see uh, on the runway, I've got a truck that I'd been using. Well, that truck has a ladder on it, and uh, I've been using that as an, in an attempt to reprocess these spacecraft. 
But there we go, come down. We'll just cut back to normal time in a second. And that's us landed. Excellent. And so let us go back to our spacecraft in orbit, which is now in one of these eccentric orbits, and we need to do a bit of manoeuvring in space. And at this point, our manoeuvring budget is getting very low. You see, uh, it says we have something like 300 meters per second delta V, so this is going to be really cutting it tight. Um, so here, we're just going to wait. We're just going to get ourselves pointing the right way, I guess. We have a crew on board. We have Billy Bobfred and Bob again. It just seems we can't get rid of those guys. They keep wanting to go back to space, even when I give them the boring jobs like running the mining rig. So yeah, you'll just watch me as I'm trying to adjust and get those encounter vectors as close as possible. There we go, 2.1 kilometers. Now we're going to fly around the surface and on the, the light side, we're going to have to kill our velocity and get ourselves into a close encounter. Now you see I'm turning the camera around a lot here saying, where is that marker? Because I'd actually turned off markers by hitting the F4 key. Now I see it and I start trying to adjust my position and velocity to make sure that I come in as close as possible to the, to the space station. Uh, there we go, For, not very much fuel left, 16, and 16 units of fuel, this is really starting to get tight, uh, and we don't have a huge amount of RCS on this, we're down to 46, but yes, we kill our velocity down to zero with 7.89 fuel units left, and now it's just a case of coming in carefully and slowly and flying past Olympus. Unfortunately, the docking ports that we're going for are on the other side. We're on the north side of the station, and uh, we're going to have to go to the south side of the station. But that does mean we can get a nice, beautiful fly past here. Man, yeah, so this is, of course, running at a higher speeds. I cannot wait for the improved performance that we're going to see with uh, Unity 4. I mean, seriously, it's going to make this uh, you know, probably about 25% faster, I would say. I'm not sure, but um, at a basic estimate. Uh, <laughs> although Damien was saying today, you know, the, like if, if they made it so that we'd accept spacecraft that had a 1,000 parts, then people would be complaining that it didn't handle 2,000 parts. It's just the nature of the game. Absolutely. I would build crazy big things, given the time. But yes, we're now coming in for approach, and uh, this thing is just moving off center all the time. I just don't know how to keep that straight anymore. Regardless, it's a refueling cycle as we watch the silhouette of the space station against the sky and uh, refill the RCS tank, and uh, if I can find it... Yes, there we go. So now, we're going to actually reprocess that lander, or that spent stage. You see, previously we have just landed things on the ground and said, aha, it's come back intact. And uh, I've just said, Okay, you know, presumably someone will pick up the pieces and refurbish them in the vehicle assembly building, but I'm going to actually do this for reals on my own. Now, what we have here is the airship mod by Hooligan, uh, Hooligan Labs, and underneath it we have strung, uh, well, we've strung some fuel, and we've strung a control capsule, and we have a new upper stage, a new payload for the rocket. So... We're turning very, very slowly, and you can see how slowly this thing turns. It is awfully slow, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to accelerate times. We're aiming for the Keithane Miner Probe, which is there. So uh, now we'll, we'll use the electric propellers, and you see that uh, because the frame rate is slightly is synchronized with the rotation rate, they do not seem to move when I reuse 100% power, which is a problem. But regardless, I'm just going to fly this across. On the bottom, say, control panel, you can tell it to hold altitude, which is incredibly useful. And uh, using the interior view so I can line things up exactly, this is this is being run at like 16 times normal speed because it takes forever. It has a top speed of about 7 meters per second. You're a little bit faster than walking, but you know, you're not going to be traveling 40 kilometers like this because you will probably want to commit suicide. <laughs> but yeah, we're so kind of descending down and what I'm going to try to do is dock this on top of the minor probe. And this is not a trivial operation because, well, what we do is we get down, 
we adjust our vertical velocity and then we're going to use the RCS to try and get ourselves exactly matched and this is pretty hard actually it's just a very very slow process but the, at least you can kind of hold your your attitude and hold your altitude using the buoyancy control so this is going to be an extra fuel tank with RCS and the Keithane converter. So we're going to launch this up to the station ideally and dock it onto that uh, Keithane mining unit and then the whole thing will travel to the moon. Uh, the idea being that we can leave this bit on the station. We'll probably take the converter down to the ground. It is a small converter, it's not the most efficient one, but I, I am concerned about the lack of Delta V on my Keithane mining rig. So being able to manufacture fuel on the surface would be great. Now you notice immediately I start whacking down my buoyancy control. As soon as I docked, the altitude control has to be turned off because what it will try to do is start to lift the entire vehicle. And you can see that those docking ports are really stressed. They're getting stretched vertically. And uh, I actually had one spacecraft that split in half after docking. It split in half at the RCS tank. Those docking ports are really strong. Uh, they're kind of wobbly, but they are incredibly strong. So yeah, now what I'm doing is slowly transferring the fuel from those fuel tanks. And you want to kind of keep things balanced on left to right. Uh, you don't want the thing falling over. And as you're transferring fuel down, you want to reduce your buoyancy. As you see the docking ports get stressed again, you don't want the spacecraft to break in half because that would be rather unfortunate. And uh, you would then have to, you know, really ask, imagine that there was someone able to reprocess it. So there is a lot of these little radial fuel tanks, and this takes a long time. You can see these filling up bit by bit. We, we're transferring fuel from these. Uh, we brought four Rocket Max fuel tanks, and that's enough to refuel this entire rocket, and only just. It's a good thing those engines are solar powered. There's a giant array of solar panels on top of this lifting envelope so yeah here we go uh, we're just getting there we've got two more to go and I'm kind of trying to balance these things out that's one more yep get the liquid fuel and the oxidizer and then as we're almost there um, I start to turn around and I make a fatal mistake I uh, you know the shift key or the alt key it's right next to the space bar and I had not had stage lock set, so I staged and dumped all my external tanks. <laughs> and so, so they all fall away there, and I'm left with a rocket that is fueled, but now does not have the jet engine stage. And so now it is time for plan B. And plan B is for Balukit. Or... Perhaps it should be plan R for Raccoon. What is a Raccoon? Well, a rocket and a balloon, obviously. Now, Raccoons were actually used in the 50s, and they were pioneered by somebody you might have heard of, a certain James Van Allen, who would take his sounding rockets up on weather balloons, and when they were sitting you know, 15, 20 kilometers up, then they would fire them to get even more altitude. And, uh, you know, that was how he did some of his early state space research. The first ones didn't apparently fire correctly, and they attributed it to extreme cold affecting the timing mechanisms. Um, so what they did, apparently for launch number three, he uh, heated up some orange juice cans that he had, and they wrapped a blanket around the, co the, the heating system, or the, around the clockwork system. So, <laughs> yes, orange juice was actually an ingredient to uh, make his rockets fly, believe it or not. But yeah, James Van Allen went on to, of course, discover the Van Allen belts. Very important. Anyway, we are at altitude, and so we detach, switch, fire that rocket up. And yeah, another thing that had been concerning me was that I had meant to include the quantum struts with this thing. <laughs> and you see that as I'm accelerating this top wants to wobble there goes the balloon we're flying past it unfortunately because of the nature of the game as soon as we pass beyond two and a half kilometers that that will be removed from the game but uh, I'm pretty sure I could have landed that safely it's just the game that decided to remove it for me and I, I understand the game has limitations based on unity so anyway because we are firing from almost nine kilometers up it means we have 
we have a lot less atmosphere to get through and that hopefully means that we get into orbit in fact we do get into orbit with a lot more fuel left than before granted that upper stage does include a bunch of fuel that was uh, drained from it but uh yeah unfortunately due to my ineptitude i uh managed to put myself about as far away from the target as possible so <laughs> Uh, I have to make a whole bunch of orbits. I reduce my altitude a little, and you can see me spinning around as I'm trying to as the rendezvous distance drops. And there we go. We finally uh, get ourselves into an encounter in super super speed time because really, you know, it's it's kind of boring. And there we go. Now, uh, my ability to dock this thing was absolutely terrible. Everything was off center, and again, RCS isn't balanced, but you know, it will be fixed, I'm sure, because it will be really nice to have fixed stuff. And I know the devs are great people that are capable of moving mountains when necessary. So that's us. Now, one thing I had also thought about in the reprocessing was I had built a nice little ladder truck that I would drive up to the rocket sitting on the ground and the Kerbal would climb up the ladder and repack all the parachutes before liftoff. But it turns out that after the parachutes are discarded, they uh, don't open again once you try to take off. So you can fly the thing back into space, and then in space you can EVA and, and replace all the chutes, or repack all the chutes. I'm not sure if that's a bug or not, but it certainly made things a lot easier, because I kept on having Kerbals fall off the ladder and get crushed by the truck. It was kind of amusing, but it wasn't very productive. Anyway, that's him. He's uh, repacked all the parachutes, and we can now return this to the planet. So uh, we're just going to jettison this whole thing. I'm leaving the fuel on board because uh, I might need it to kill my vertical velocity on landing. This has no landing legs, and so it will probably fall over if I don't get a nice surface. I'm, of course, aiming for the space center again. And, well, we'll see how well that goes. I'm using the RCS to do the deorbit burn. Uh, we have tons of RCS left. That's not a problem. But having the rocket fuel there will mean that we can perhaps pick our landing site a little better, you know. So there, we're going to drop the periaps down uh, about 40 kilometers there, right next to the space center. And that actually overdid it. So we're skimming across the desert. 45 kilometers up now, you see that uh, yep, our velocity has been killed and we're flying over the mountains and at this point I say, oh crap, I think I'm going to land on the hills. So, lift the nose up the best I can and use a little bit of thrust to try and get myself going sideways to try and clear away from the hills and, and get over some more, um, some flatter territory hopefully. But uh, ditch it, fire the, the rocket, fire the, the chutes, and come down! And now here we are, we have a tiniest sliver of fuel we're going to try. Oh, very nice kaleidoscope there, yes. Uh, try to land, just using the tiniest amount of fuel, and... And I overdo it, and my parachutes close. Ah, uh, no! 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 Ah! Crash! And yes, I can absolutely for certain say that this is no longer 100% reusable. Some people might have forgiven me for losing the cowling for the, for the nuclear rockets, but I fell over and I broke a parachute and a photovoltaic cell. Of course, we can imagine that some Kerbals will pick this up and reprocess it, but until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.